In this video, we're talking about the second big virus to hit Linux this year, and this one is by far the worst of all time, especially if you're running GNOME desktop environments in Linux. And the name of this virus is Evil Gnome. Rightfully dubbed because it runs as an extension in, you guessed it, the GNOME desktop environment, and it does a variety of bad things. So let's go ahead and jump into this video. So this actually came out of a Russia hacking group and it's tailor made specifically for not only Linux, but even more specific than that, GNOME desktop environment for Linux. They created it as an extension. So it actually gets downloaded as a bash dot sh file you know if you see dot sh and it's a gnome extension uh, dot sh file it extracts a payload on your computer that does a whole variety of things it monitors your audio picks it up and uploads it back to this hacking group it monitors your computer for any new files made and uploads it to them as well it's constantly pinging and asking for any new commands to deliver any mal more malicious payloads and then also, it has an actual keylogger built into it to where it can actually record your keys and report it back. So as you see, this is probably the worst uh, virus out there. Now, as far as antivirus goes, who is detecting it and are they detecting it? And the answer is nobody has really have detected this yet. I think on virus total, it completely came through as clear all the way across. Nobody's actually detecting it as a malicious payload. So even if you do run antivirus on Linux, this one will probably slip past your gaze or of the actual antivirus. So uh, very interesting. Uh, here are my initial thoughts before everybody runs to the comments, all you Windows users watching this video and say, aha, I told you, as Linux gets more popular, it will get more viruses. Well, yes, you are correct. Linux has gotten a lot more popular this year, but at the same token, this is only the second major virus that has come out, and it's specifically targeted for GNOME desktop environments, which is not that many actual users. A lot of people switch from it, and if you watch my Windows to Linux conversion, a lot of people will install like Pop! OS, and convert to KDE, which I love KDE as a desktop environment. And since I run KDE and not GNOME, I don't download GNOME extensions. Therefore, this type of vulnerability, it just wouldn't happen on my system. So, yay. <laughs> but as far as you GNOME users out there, please, 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 if you're gonna download GNOME extensions, definitely download them from the official source. Go to gnome-look.org and download them there. Uh, obviously, GNOME Look is where you should be downloading all your extensions. Never, ever download from an untrusted repository. As we've seen, you can get into big trouble with something like this. Now, as far as my advice, hey, do you need to run antivirus in Linux? And my advice still kind of remains the same. Even if you were running antivirus, it still wouldn't pick this up because it's such a new thing on the market. And really, there's not that many antiviruses completely tailored for Linux. So this one was kind of an oddity because it just doesn't really happen. It's never really happened before in history. So this is kind of a very interesting thing and something that really I think everyone expected to see sometime. And honestly, I kind of expected to this year uh, at, on a massive scale to see something like this because I know Linux has picked up a lot of users ever since Steam Play was announced last year. It slowly started to see an increase in users, especially on its desktop environments. And as Windows 10 has kind of gotten worse, a lot of people have searched for other desktops. This kind of just kind of goes into that. The more popular something gets, the more targeted it is by malicious people. And one thing I will say is Linux is fundamentally different than Windows because most things in Linux can all be downloaded from a trusted repository. Almost all the stuff from your package manager is from a trusted repository, which means you're not going to get infected from that. You're not going to go download it from some third-party site. It's all built from a terminal, and that terminal is connected to that trusted repository, which is going to be clean. I, I don't think there's been any case 
of a trusted repository infecting a Linux machine. And that is a very good thing. So before anybody goes, oh my God, the sky is falling. Just remember, this is an isolated incident of someone going out of their way, writing a specific virus, targeting a specific desktop environment within Linux. And it required the user to go out and get something from an untrusted source and run it. Most things Almost everything I install on my Linux boxes are from official repositories, which are very safe. I just want to go ahead and reiterate that this is not like a complete oddity. Anybody can do this. I just wanted to go ahead and raise awareness to be careful when downloading unauthorized GNOME extensions. They can be very, very bad, as we've seen here. And uh, that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't really realize is if you're customizing GNOME a whole bunch to get it to exactly how you want it, you might be on the wrong desktop environment. So if you are a GNOME user and you're constantly modifying it to make it look like Windows or Mac OS X or whatever uh, floats your boat, it, if you're customizing it heavily using extensions, you probably need to be on a different desktop environment. My favorite, again, is KDE. However, there's Mate, XFCE. There's literally 10 to 20 different desktop environments out there that would probably better suit you. So what does this mean for the future of Linux? Does it affect its popularity? Does it affect any of these things? And the answer to this is obviously not. I mean, this is, again, an outlier. It's not a direct infestation from, let's say, an NSA backdoor. Um, Thanks, Microsoft, for that, by the way. But it does actually go ahead and kind of expose some users to that, hey, I'm on Linux, I can't get infected with a virus, no matter what I do. And that is not true, obviously. You can if you're extremely reckless. And I think this is true on any operating system. It's just something I wanted to go ahead and share. Do I still recommend installing an antivirus in Linux based on this? And the answer is maybe, depending on the user. And the question of whether or not I install an antivirus and run it on my Linux boxes. No, I don't. I don't have an active monitored antivirus in Linux because I do run scans every once in a while, like with ClamAV, but I still don't need a, a reason to actively monitor because, again, I am using trusted sources. I am downloading it from trusted places. And it's very rare I would go out to the internet and download a package, extract it, and run a bash script just to get that out. I, I think that's just a little silly, the way this is delivered. But at the same time, I can totally see how people could fall for it. Some cool extension that makes GNOME do something that it normally doesn't. But other than that, I really am not concerned with this. I think we're going to see more viruses of this kind that as people find and use Linux, these hackers will pick up on certain nuances that Linux users are doing that are possibly unsecure. And it still requires someone to download a script, extract it, do sudo, run this sh script, and then infect their computer. So it does require a lot of usage. It's not like coming through a back door or anything like that and just spreading through the network. Uh, Linux is still fundamentally far more secure than almost any other operating system out there. I stand by that statement. 100%. Um, just know that you can't just completely be reckless when you go ahead and download stuff and run anything. Make sure you're downloading from a trusted repository. And if you're still running like APT install and that type of thing, and you haven't installed any crazy repositories, guess what? That's still going to be completely secure, completely okay. You're not going to need to run it through an antivirus or any of that nonsense. It's still going to be completely fine. This is just, again, something I wanted to raise awareness when it comes to GNOME extensions and you're downloading from unauthorized sources, watch out. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.